Well, Clark County is the only county in Nevada in the red zone, according to the White House tonight, due to the new recommendations to stop slowing the spread. And they're actually recommending closing gyms at the top of the list. Your attitude just changes. You can do anything. For Alfredo Benuelos, the gym is his place of solace. I do everything. I do the cardio, I do the yoga, I do the lifting. So if these doors are forced to shut again, he says he'd be devastated. It won't be good. It won't be good for a lot of people. But given a surge of COVID-19 cases in Nevada, it's what the White House is urging our community to do. The federal report released Thursday afternoon puts Clark County in the red zone. In order to keep cases contained, the White House suggests closing bars and gyms and mandating face coverings. Governor Sisolak has already put a mask mandate in place and shut down bars that don't serve food. And while there hasn't been any official word on gyms yet, local owners are uneasy. Kind of a little nervous based on some of the information floating around right now. Rodney Rice is the co-owner of Game Changer Sports off of Decatur. He says his gym has gone above and beyond with safety requirements. We do a temperature check, we do an examiner, a respiratory check. Um, we're doing a lot of stuff to try to keep everybody, you know, keep everybody safe. But he says he will always comply with any regulation or direction to make sure his members are healthy and safe. But we have to shut down. We'll shut down. We understand. Um, of course, if we can operate and do it the correct way and be able to stay open and keep people safe, that's our preference. As for Jim Not Alfredo, yes. he hopes the governor keeps his sanctuary open. We're following the rules. I hope our governor says, you know what, They're, we're doing it right. Well, this whole debate started over Assembly Bill 2 that would redirect school funds to CCSD's budget. Superintendent Jara says he did not request it, but the governor and state education superintendent say that is not the case. Now the union representing school administrators is calling on Jara to be replaced. Administrators Union believes Dr. Jara is not telling the truth about who requested Assembly Bill 2. Had he just said in the very beginning, hey, we had requested this bill, now we no lo longer want it, I think people could have, could have uh, found a way to work with that, but he didn't do that. He's continued to perpetuate of what has become his resounding dishonesty. On Saturday, Nevada Assembly Speaker Jason Frierson announced the bill was exclusively requested by the Clark County School District, but Dr. Jara has denied that. Today, the Clark County Association of School Administrators and Professional Technical Employees sent a letter to Jara calling him, quote, selfish, egocentric, and without moral code or compass. I think one of the significant terms, concerns now is he's no longer credible. In response, the Clark County Education Association says the administrators union is focused solely on Jara and not on getting schools the money they need. They are against having Dr. Jara replaced. We have no confidence in that board of trustees to lead our school district. And again, I will say we are not interested in a backdoor deal to bring somebody in from the state to run our school district. And we believe that's what this is part of. Hey, the Golden Knights making big moves. Even with no media access today, VGK signs the NCAA's leading scorer from last season, Jack Dugan, to a two-year deal. The 22-year-old Dugan should someday be a big contributor for the Knights, but he is not eligible for the remainder of this season. Still, it was a dream achieved. An amazing feeling, obviously. I think that, um, you know, any player in my position, anyone that's played hockey, uh, growing up and has dreamed to play in the NHL. So, um, you know, it might be a little cliche, but it truly is a, a dream come true. And um, I couldn't be happier. I'm hoping that uh, with the expect with the extended preseason and the extended offseason for me, um, I'll be able to get where I need to be by the time of training camp, wherever that whenever that may start. Well, it was all quiet at City National Arena today because after going hard for three straight days, BGK, they were off, but there's no rest for the weary in our news three sports department as Amber Dixon has what's ahead for our playoff bound Knights. The Golden Knights are set to return here on Friday for practice and when they do, they should see veteran goaltender Mark Andre Fleury on the ice. That's the plan per head coach Pete DeBoer, the three time Stanley Cup winner having missed the first three days of training camp. DeBoer also says that one focus for the remainder of this two week camp will be special teams. You know, he's feeling good. I think uh, we've got a long runway here before we start. Uh, he really practiced hard. 
He doesn't have anything significant. He will be on the ice, or the plan is he will be on the ice before the weekend. Special teams are always something that uh, you've got to spend time on, and we've started getting at that. We're going to get at more of that, but it's going to be critical in, in a in a tournament and in a playoff like this that, that your special teams are real good. So, you know, that's something that we're going to spend a lot of time on here the next week. So far this camp, there have been some competitive scrimmages, an aspect that Golden Knights defenseman Braden McNabb says he appreciates since he says it's helping him reestablish the positioning he needs to play physical. From City National Arena, I'm Amber Dixon. Thank you very much, Amber. Now, while VGK is home in Vegas, our Las Vegas Aces are down in Florida preparing for their July 26th season opener versus Chicago. Now, it will be very interesting this season for Staples, Kayla McBride, and the rest of the ladies because of COVID-19, of course, and missing some very key pieces. It's been a little bit of a roller coaster. Um, you know, there's there's this initial shock of, of the quarantine and the, and the COVID, and you obviously look inward, you know, into your family and try to make, it, make sure everything else is, is good. But then, you know, your job is involved. And, you know, I'm, I'm thankful that um, we're one of the jobs that's still being able to be, be played and be able to be here and be with my team because a lot of people are, are less fortunate and don't, you know, business is shutting down and things like that. It's just a lot of different change, you know. So I think at first you're just reacting. Um, but now just trying to settle into to being here in the bubble and being thankful for the opportunities, uh, being thankful to be here with Vegas and play basketball again. And finally, the latest really cool promotion from the Las Vegas Lights FC. They're offering fans a way to attend that August 1 opener versus those northern rivals from Reno. Buying a full-size cardboard picture to have in the stands. Now, Amber Dixon really... She, she suggested that our sports department get all three of them in there, a way to kind of cover the team in person, if you will. Amber, I completely agree. But anyway, if you'd like to find out more about this, head to news3lv.com for the link to the Las Vegas Lights FC. And folks, that will do it for sports. And as always, during these tough times, stay safe, stay healthy.